In this video, I'm going to review how to calculate the present value and future value of a series of lump sum cash flows or cash flow payments. You can see here that we have three different formulas that we're going to use for this. The first is the present value formula, or this is the present value PV of a lump sum, where CF stands for cash flow and T is the time, time T or the time period T. R is the discount rate that we're going to use, and T again is the, the time period. For NPV, which stands for net present value, we take the sum of all of the future cash flows, starting with time zero through N, which is our, our last time period, and discount those back at the discount rate for each time period. Finally, FV stands for future value, and this is the future value at time N, or the end of our cash flows, uh, period of cash flows. CF stands for, again, cash flow at time T multiplied by one plus the discount rate or the compounding rate in this case. And then up here we have N, which is that, that distant, that future time period where we're calculating the future value for minus T, the current time period. So we have uh, on our first tab, present value, future value, we have a, a series of lump sums or, or irregular cash flow payments. Um, the first year with 200, second year 500, third year 600, fourth year 800, fifth year 900, and sixth year $1,000. Our discount rate, which will also be our compounding rate, our discount rate is 10%. And using the formula that we have here, we can calculate the present value of each lump sum, and then we'll add them together to get this, the total amount, the total present value. So in the first case, we're going to take, well, before we get started, let's name this cell where our discount rate is. I'm going to call this D for discount, and then rate 1, so we'll have more than one. So I'm going to call it D, D rate 1, and so my formula will look like this. I'm, I'm calculating this manually now. I'm going to put in equals my cash flow at time t, in this case time 1, divided by 1 plus d rate 1, so I highlight that uh, discount rate, raised to, and so this is a shift uh, in, in the number 6 to get our up carrot the first year. And, and so mind you, I'm not putting a 1 in here because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this down to calculate them all at once. And so I get a value of $181.82 when I discount the $200 back to today for one year at 10%. I'm going to change my formatting there to turn it into dollars. And now I can just grab this. And so what I do is I put my cursor over the little box there until it turns into a plus sign. Hold down your right mouse button and pull that all the way down. And then these are, are the present values of each of these cash flows discounted back to time at the beginning of year one. The sum then of these cash flows is $2,715.54. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to use the present value function in Excel to calculate the present value of each of these lump sums. And then again, we'll take the um, present, the sum of those to find the, the total amount of those present values. So here I'm going to put in equals PV, open parentheses. The rate is going to be my D rate 1. The number of periods will be my year. So mind you, I didn't put 1. I put just, I, I selected A6. The payment is 0 because this isn't an annuity, this is a lump sum. I'm going to put a negative and then highlight the cash flow. And you can see here that there's parentheses around that indicating that if I want my present value to be positive, I need to make my future value negative. Then my type, uh, this is for the cases where we have an annuity versus an annuity due. Um, a regular annuity, for that we'd put a zero in. For an annuity due, we'd put a 1 in, but this is a lump sum, so I don't have to put anything in. And so we see that we get the same answer between the two different methods. 
Again, I'm just going to pull this down. You can see I get the same answer between the two different methods of calculating the present value of a lump sum. Finally, I'm going to use NPV, or net present value, to calculate the present value of these future cash flows. For this, I, I put in equals NPV. My rate is my DRAY1 that I named up here. And then I can just highlight the values. And I get an answer again of $2,715.54. So the future value of a lump sum, again, if we look on the slides, the future value, so I want to find the value at time n. I multiply the cash flow at time t by 1 plus the compounding rate in this case, raised to the total number of periods. So if I want to find out the, the future value of time 10, it would be 10 minus whatever time period we're in where, when we receive that cash flow. So here I'm going to take equals 200. Oh, sorry. First I want to name my discount rate. So I'm going to name that D rate 2. So I'm going to press equals, highlight my cash flow multiplied by 1 plus d rate 2 raised to, and now I'm going to put in open parentheses here. While this is not in the um, equation that I have written down, I need to do this so that Excel knows that I'm, I'm taking the my number to the power of n minus t. So n in this case is equal to 6. And then and then it's six because that's my total number of years. Then I want to subtract out the current year. So I get three twenty-two and ten cents. And so that's what it, this two hundred dollars would be worth at the end of six years. You can see here, and, and I know that the, the answer is correct for year six because 6 minus 6 is 0. So all the equation is is 1,000 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.10 raised to the 0 power, which just makes this 1 plus 0 0.10 equal to 1. And the reason why we don't receive any interest income from this is because we're going to receive this at the end of year 6, which is the end of our cash flow time period, and so there's no time for us to receive a, a return on that. Our future value formula then in Excel, our rate, again, is D rate 2. Our number of time periods will again be 6, our total number of time periods for the problem that we're looking at, minus the current year, our payment, sorry, our payment is equal to zero because this is not an annuity. Our present value, again, I'm going to make this negative so I get a positive answer, will be the cash flow. And then again, for type, we're not going to put anything in there. You could put a zero. Um, this is not an annuity problem, so we don't need to put anything there. Again, I get the same answer between the manual and the future value formula in Excel. I'm just going to pull that down. And then I'm going to find the sum. I get four thousand eight ten seventy five. Again, four thousand eight hundred and ten dollars and seventy five cents.